going on? This is Preston from Tucka CG Flash Out. Gonna be tying an articulated streamer for you guys today. Um, sort of a pattern kind of inspired by uh, several different flies. Um, Mike Schmidt's Viking Midge, um, the Cheech Leech, and um, there's like a, a, an Orvis pattern called the Heisenberg. It's just a articulated streamer with a dubbing head, synthetic wool head. Let's get started. So I've got a A-Rex Trout Predator. Uh, I think it's the Light Trout Predator and a one -aught. Um A Gamagatsu B10S or other Stinger Hook would also be perfectly fine. I've got a 210 Thread. I think this is a Danville uh, Flat Wax in pink. Doesn't really matter. I'd like to go heavy. Um, I'd probably do a, a 210, but we're going to get that thread started. Right back, come in with our scissors. We are going to tie in a tail of tan marabou. So pull out your plume, select a decent feather. We're going to be doing this in sort of a modeled sucker slash chub um, sort of color variation I'm gonna pull that tip off some people like to wet their marabou but I like to leave mine dry so I can see what it's gonna do when it's tied in so I'm gonna do a little bit longer than the tail here a little bit longer than the the, the shank of the hook I'm gonna back to the bend I'm going to give my bobbin a quick spin, cord that thread up. Give it one, two good securing wraps. Draw it off to one side and tie that in down the body. back. I'm going to come in with a UV polar chenille. This was the gold. Clean some of that back. Make sure I capture that core. Otherwise it'll pull out. All right, then I'm going to use the rotary feature of the Norvice here. I'm going to Palmer that up the hook shank. You want to come in, preen that out, kind of make it like a hackle. Do a few, after a few turns, you want to make sure you pull on that nice and snug. like to come back and wrap back over that core a little bit and build a little thread head. Alright, I'm going to come in with my bodkin and pick that out just a little bit. Make sure I got everything out. Alright, give that a whip finish. Just gonna do a quick little few turn finger whip finish, pull that snug, and that's the beauty of this fly is that back hook is done. And uh, we're going to hit that with some Zappa Gap. If the zap wants to come out. Give me just a second. Grab a fresh bottle. All 
just a little bit. I'm going to wet my finger and just come in dab over that. And that should set that super glue. And it shouldn't come undone. All right. Pop that hook out. We're going to come in with our front hook, which is another one aught A Rex Trout Predator. Get that seated in the vise. Going to start my thread right here, and I'm going to build a little thread bump right there. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to build another little thread bump. Doesn't have to be perfect. Alright. Medium lead eyes from Hairline. And red. I'm going to start that out on top and give it a couple wraps. That side, a couple wraps on this side. Just twist that over. And continue giving it these X wraps. I like to give it some wraps on either side and then these very important under wraps. And I'm really putting some pressure on there. You break it? I bow I broke the thread. Broke it. I always break my thread. Broke his thread. That's why I like to use a 210. I really like to tie with a lot of force. It gives you far more durable streamers. So I really like to go as, as heavy as I as I can really with that thread. All right. Now this is the most important part. We're going to talk about articulating flies here. Um, I'm going to be articulating this fly with um, a, a nylon covered uh, steel, uh, stainless steel wire. In this case, it is Scientific English bite wire in the 25 pound. You could also use Beetalon or um, or another product. I'm just going to give myself a little um, call it a four inch section. Cut that with my wire cutters. Oh, I have to take the scissors. All right. And I'm going to seriously cord this thread up. I want this thing one single strand, not a lot of individual strands, but one single strand of thread, and I'm going to do open spiral wraps down my hook shank to the end here, do a little ball, make sure that thread's corded up again. I'm going to come back and do cross. And what that does is gives me texture because of this nylon coated wire. When I tie this in, it's going to grip into every single one of these grooves if you hear this. There's some serious texture there now. And so some people like to double their wires over or, or um, stuff like that. But this way, you just tie it in really neat and clean. Still, again, with the very corded up thread. I'm going to wrap that back a little bit into the bend of the hook. All right. And that's never going to pull out. And I always do you know one at a time. In this case, I'm going to come in on uh, the far side of the hook, sort of, sort of on the top, sort of towards the far side of the hook shank. Um, now we are going to come in with some articulation beads. These are just, um, I like to use pink whenever I'm doing tan. Um, so these are just some little glass beads. I like to, or sorry, these are plastic. I prefer to use plastic because they're not going to break and they do their job just fine. Going to slide one of these over. Take that tail. Pop that in. And this is an important part. You do not want to have, so since we have a, a straight eye streamer hook, it's not it's not vertical, it's 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 um, straight 
in line with the with the hook shank. Um, I, I want this um, articulation loop, this loop in the wire, to be perfectly vertical. You see, if I twist my wire, it's going to can off to one side, and my hook is going to fish this way. And you might miss some miss some strikes, and it's going to swim funny, and it's going to keel funny. So, fortunately, this wire doesn't have any twist in it. But if it did, I could simply just twist my my wire one way or the other to get it to pin it where I want it. So. In this case, I want a nice, perfectly vertical loop, and that's fine. Just coming over right over top of that, that where I tied in the wire the first time. So I'm just going to pinch that right there. Come in and secure that with one good turn of pressure. And then I'm going to want it to twist on me a little bit, so I'm going to twist that wire back towards me. Again, just trying to get that perfectly vertical loop. Boom. Now I'm going to really try to secure this. And again, with, with a very corded up thread so I can get as much pressure and as much tensile strength out of this 210 as I possibly can. I'm going to come just shy of where I want to cut it at. And I'm going to come in with some scissors. Use the back of mine. Boom. Be careful when you come to wrap that over that you don't cut your thread on that, on that end. And... In my opinion, this is the best way to tie in your articulation wires. This thing is not going to pull out. And you get a nice clean body. All right. We are going to come back up to the front. We are going to take our UV polar chenille again. Tie that in. Wrap up to about yay far. We're gonna throw in that quick little double whip finish right here. My thread doesn't spin around too much, and I'm gonna use that rotary feature again here. This doesn't have to be perfect. Again, come in, bring that out. Pick that out. Oh, got trapped in my thread a little bit. Alright, call that good. Really secure that. Again, double it over. Double back over the core of that chenille. Make sure it's really securely tied in. And I'm going to come in with my bobbin again. Pick that out. Alright, here comes the fun part. We are going to... Where this kind of differs from uh, Mike Schmidt's Viking Midge is one, we did a marabou tail rather than a hackle tail. Um, and instead of stacking a wing, we're going to palmer a wing. Um, that's where it kind of comes from uh, maybe like the cheech leech or, or another another pattern and in this case you know you think about what our sculpins and um, suckers and all our um, all these forage um, minnows and fish that are in our rivers here in the southeast here especially on the Tuckasegee they're all modeled most of them I find are some sort of gray or tan with um, maybe black or brown bars and modeling um, so I really like to fish tan flies, especially um, in the spring um, when those suckers and those chubs are starting to become more active. Um, I'm going to find myself a nice good f good feather with a lot, really long, um, I guess bar peels. This one looks good. I'm going to prune this guy back a little bit. Pull off some of that nasty stuff. All right, and there's my first one. And then I'm going to come in with a, a barred piece of tan and, and, and brown barred marabou. And that's going to give me some modeling, but still give me a light 
a light presentation. Right, we're gonna double those over each other. I'm gonna come in and, and kind of find the tips of both of those. And preen back those longer fibers. Right, and I want that barred marabou to be the leading edge of this. All right, I'm gonna come back here and make sure I get as much of the stem as possible. Snap that back. Go ahead and trim that tip. And I'm going to grab both of the butts here with a pair of hackle pliers, and we are going to pommel this. I'm going to be brushing these fibers back and I'm going to give that a little spin. Brush those fibers back. Give that a spin. Brush those fibers back. Alright, I'm going to stack that right behind those lead eyes because I'm going to tie back over these stems and before I tie it off I'm going to come in with that bodkin again and sort of pick this out so just treating this marabou like a hackle all right I'll call that good come in All funky on me. All right, wrap back. And I'm gonna come back and wrap back over those stems. Really make sure I secure that. I'm gonna come in, find those stems, and trim those off. Come in. You can come in with a comb. Or just use your fingers, or use a bodkin, pick that out. It's going to look crazy, but trust me, she fishes. All right. Next up, we are going to stack a synthetic wool head on here. And you can use any product here, whether it's um, Bruiser Blend, Laser Dub, um, Frankenfly, um, or Franken Dub. You could even use a, a, a non-synthetic wool. Uh, I'm going to pull out a pretty decent clump, about this much. I'm going to rip stack it a couple times, and then I'm going to cut it in half. Then I'm going to lay it so that those tapered butts are laying against the untapered butts of the other half. And I'm going to rip stack that. What I'm trying to do is get rid of that unnatural edge. And, and also shorten the length of my fibers. So I don't, I just didn't want um, each end of fi fiber to be that long. All right. Give us a first stack right here. Make sure that's secure. And I'm going to grab another similar um, clump of wool here. Give that one or two good rip stacks just to get get everything lined up. And then again I'm going to cut that in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. Lay those butts over each other. Give it some good rip stacks. Rotate that vice over, place that right here, 
I want to make sure that this is sort of splayed out. I almost want the, the leading edge of the dubbing on the top to touch the leading edge of the dubbing on the bottom. If it doesn't, it's fine. We can brush it that way later. Um, but we are going to make sure that's nice and secure. Rotate our vise back over. And then wrap back over that. All right. Now we are going to do the repeat, the same steps, this time in front of the lead eyes. I'm going to grab a, a larger clump than I used on both stacks last time, just to kind of make up, give myself some. Don't be afraid to overdub these heads. Um, in fact, it's, it's better to overdub than underdub. You can remove material, but you can't add more after you finish. After you whip finish that fly, you're going to have to cut it if you want to. If you want to um, add more dubbing. So if you're going to do one, overdub. Again, we're going to rip stack these fibers. Maybe down right here. There we go. Grab another clump. Just like that one. Grab myself one more stack. There we go. Alright, come in, cut that in half, lay those bucks over each other, like so. Continue rip stacking. And like I said, I'm just trying to get rid of that unnatural taper that I just created by cutting it with scissors. Get rid of that. All right. Put that vice over. Uh oh. She wanted to spin on me a little bit. See what we got going on over here. Pull that off to one side. All right now, you want to build a nice little thread head here, and that's going to push that head. Back onto itself. All right, that's good. Oh. Lost that thread head. Maybe we'll make up for it with a we finish. Here. Now this is going to look pretty crazy. In a way we are going to brush it out and then trim it. So come in with a comb. This is literally just a Walmart comb. I'm going to brush that head out on all sides. Lay it out. Perfect. Alright. I'm going to rotate my vise. I am going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to follow, I'm going to basically put the base on this hook point and I'm going to put my edge of my scissors onto, or sorry, the, the hook eye. I'm going to put my the edge of my scissors onto that hook point and follow that. I'm going to come in and I'm going to 45 all those hard edges. And then 45 those edges, 45 those edges, until I eventually get a round. Rounded shape. Go slow here. You don't want to cut. Again, you can always take away more material, but you, you can't add it after this point. All right. 
think we're good on the bottom there. I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to do a, I want a hard edge right here up front. If you got any of that dubbing covering up the eye, get rid of that. Right, perfect. Now, I'm going to come in with a bit of UV resin. I'm going to dab some right here on the. Actually, let me come on, trim just a little bit more off that edge right there. Make sure that hook eye is clean. I'm going to dab a little bit of UV resin right here on the front of this hook, hook eye. All right, then I'm going to come in with my bodkin. I'm going to roll that up. That's what so, what weight rod are you throwing that on? Well, so the beauty of using a synthetic head is that that once you give this one false cast, it's going to shed all that water. Unlike a unlike a natural wool head, which is going to hold water, this is going to shed all that water. And basically, you're just kind of casting the weight of the wet marabou and uh, the lead eyes. So you could cast this on a five weight. You could cast it on a six weight. Um, I'm going to be casting it on a seven weight with um, a sinking line. Um, Seven is probably going to be the best. It's going to be the most comfortable. But you could you could probably very easily and comfortably fish this on a on a six weight, and um, and get it done all day. That's that's really is the beauty of the synthetic wool head. Um, and so the reason why we're hitting this 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 front this leading edge at the front of this head with this UV resin is I want a hard surface for this water to hit, come over the fly, run over this marabou, give this some motion, and kick this tail off to one side or the other. That's what's going to give us our action, or give us a lot more action and really get the most out of our materials. Otherwise, we might not get so much of a head kick. All right. Are you doing like a jerk strip retrieve or, are you, or what, what type of retrieve are you doing? So because of the lead eyes, when you stop this fly, it's going to not just immediately stop. It's going to stop over a small window. That's going to allow that fly to, to, to um, that tail to actually mm -hmm. kick. Right. Um, so you can, you can jerk strip this. You can just, um, you can honestly just dead retrieve it. You know, like I said, when it stops, it's going to give itself some motion. Um, I was jerk stripping this fly the other day. Um, and it was, it was giving it a little bit more motion and that, that seemed to be an open still water. Mm -hmm. These fish were sitting in, um, on logs and stuff like that. Um, that seemed to be the ticket. They liked that jerk strip through there. Um, and then that we also had fish eating it when it was just swinging in the current because of that tail, it's going to get some kick and some motion. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice, like sculpin chub, um, pattern with a dark head and a light mottled body with some flash. And, um, there you go. I don't have a name for this fly, but it's an articulated streamer.
go. <clears throat> it is a producer for me. I really like to fish it in the spring. Good to go. Thanks for watching, guys.